Sounds good to me. And welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers. Um, it is the 18th of March, 2020. And um, we imagine this conversation tonight to be something like, um, and I'll tell you who the we are here in a second and do some introductions, something like a, a um, fishbowl where a, a group of us who have been working together um, around the National Geographic's GeoInquiry project. Um, GeoInquiry is a project? What is it? A GeoInquiry process. Playlist? Uh, Process. Oh, process. Yeah, and we've been we've been messing around with LRNG playlists, trying to figure out how to put that process online, how to, you know what that looks like for youth, and so forth. And we've been kind of, as I said in the notes to this, we've been deliberative, we've been careful, we've been collaborative, we've been kind of working on it. And then last week we said, oh my God, everything, everybody wants curriculum online. We really need to get this out to people. Then we kept talking to each other. This is a short story. I'm almost done. <laughs> we kept talking to each other and said, you know, the most important thing right now is that people need to um, be connected to a community of practice. So why don't we just open our process, let people see what we've been messing with, and see if they can kind of take pieces of it, see if it's of use to somebody um, in some way. Is that a fair introduction? Um, and let me introduce the five people involved in that. Christina Cantrell um, is, uh, just took a nap and is trying to get to us. I don't know if she'll make it yet or not. Um, she is uh, one of those people working on this. Jeff Durking is here. Um, uh, Carrie Novelis is here. And um, is Rich here? I thought he got here. Yep, I'm here. Uh, Rich is here, good, okay. I have to change my gallery view here. There we go. <laughs> so, and, and a bunch of other people have joined us. Wonderful. Um, the stream's not working tonight. I hit some limit. I always hit a limit somewhere. Um, <laughs> and so, um, so welcome to join us in the conversation or whatever. Let's quickly go around and, and Jeff, um, Rich, and Carrie introduce yourselves and uh, just say a little bit about what you've been working on here, very briefly. And also kind of, we also, sorry, we also do want to give space here at the beginning, and I'm talking a lot too much, to, for you, for everyone here just to say, what's, it, what's going on for you? What's online education looking like? You know, what kind of disruptions are happening in your life and so forth? We're gonna start there and then see if some of what we've been working on won't be an answer, but will help us question in different ways what, what you're doing. Is that fair? How was that, Jeff? Go ahead. <laughs> I thought you did great. I'm Jeff Deerking. I'm in Kansas City, Missouri. More specifically, I'm in Raytown. And I've been working with uh, LRNG playlists online for about a year and a half now in various ways. And a few months ago, I started working with these people, with Carrie and Rich and Paul and Christina specifically on um, National Geographic playlists. Um, and yeah, I teach at the Herndon Career Center. So I teach um, an English course for kids in Votech. And I also am the English coordinator for the district. Why don't we just do that much and then we'll come back for the other questions later. Carrie, how about you? Okay. Hi, I'm Carrie Nobis, and I am an English teacher turned science teacher in Michigan. Um, I've done a little bit of work with LRNG in the past and then joined this great team to work with the geo inquiry process and LRNG and um, that's, that's it. Cool. Was your playlist the stress playlist or not? No, it was that the was DNA. The, it was the DNA one, which is a wonderful mm -hmm. playlist too. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Um, Actually, we have a good story about that one. We do. I want to make sure that you heard that story, Corey, Carrie. <laughs> anyway, another time. Sounds good. <laughs> I, I, I I, an and L youth in the summertime. It's okay. I can. I think I can say it quickly. Yeah, you can tell. He yeah. was, she, she was given lots of options. I think, I think she wanted to be a, wants to be a nursing student. Um, and she chose that playlist and kind of 
worked it through and the teachers who were working with her were very good facilitators but didn't know the material themselves so and it worked um she Go really ahead. learned a lot and so all right fantastic is that is that a fair summary <laughs> yeah we she had a portfolio too and we looked at that portfolio That's with her true. teacher at um ncte so we were looking at your playlist and the work she did so anyway it was really Yikes. good <laughs> christina keep introducing yourself hi <laughs> hi everyone i'm christina Cantrell from the national writing project popping in here late and uh i've been working with this team uh, this fabulous team on um sort of the, the nat geo inquiry process and the playlists and we the full house tonight yeah yeah, yeah. Welcome, everybody yeah the stream is broken so we're all here <laughs> just like <laughs> okay. good yeah we're flowing down the stream either way, right, Paul? That's right. <laughs> so I'm Rich Novak, and um, I'm an English teacher in uh, Connecticut at a high school, and I'm also working with the LRNG team with the Nat Geo Inquiry. And I guess where I approach this is I've done the Nat Geo Inquiry process with my class uh, last year, my English class. Um, I, I saw really a lot of benefits with it, saw a lot of interesting things emerge. And now that we're all in this situation, I'm out of, I'm, I'm teaching at home right now. I'm online as of the last two days. Um, I'm just thinking like, okay, so we've been designing these playlists, talking about these ideas. How can I bring this to my classes? Um, so there's some opportunities there. We can talk about that, right? That's right. Do you want to say more about what you and your class did last year? Was yeah, it last year? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Which I think so, will set it up nicely. Yeah, it, you know, and I can even kind of merge into kind of what I'm thinking now, right now in my classroom. You know, right now I'm teaching 10th graders, um, you know, one honors level and one non-honors level, and um, or three non-honors, I should say. And last year I worked with my environmental literature elective. Um, so we kind of already had this angle where we were looking at environment. And then at GEO, process is really first and foremost um, situated to place, to a place and to, you know, inquiry in a place. It's really an inquiry process in a place. So I did that with my students and we investigated this park next to our school that I always go field journaling in. I often take students out there. We do a little bit of journaling back there. Um, and they folded that work into uh, an inquiry um, project with the Nat Geo playlist. We went through the whole playlist. We actually um, went into the LRNG process with passwords and codes and all that kind of identification. And students were awarded badges for their inquiry work. Um, we produced a video and we shared it. We actually got the park cleaned, actually. <laughs> There's, and it's still like ongoing. They pay a lot more attention to it lately, actually, I noticed. But I take students there hiking now. The, the park is a lot cleaner, so I think they put the park on the radar at least. So they kind of did some actual service learning. Um, so there's these playlists, right? I'm sure we'll talk a little bit about it, but there's these playlists that you can access through just a link. And then it takes you through a model of what you could do with your group by looking at this fake group, this cartoonish group, Sanjay and this group. Um, and we did that and I'm thinking about now, how could I do this with my 10th graders? And, and the immediate thing I'm thinking right now is, well, they're in a place right now, no matter what. You know, we, we've been redesigning this for school places. As I think about it, like we, our students are in places right now, they're in their yards, they're in their, they can't go very far out of their houses. There's so much I could do with that. So that's kind of where I'm thinking right now. And I'm, uh, I'm interested in, to hearing from other people, well, you know, their experiences too. So I'll leave it right there for a bit. Sounds good. I don't know how to do this, but I want to invite anybody who's bold enough to kind of jump in and say, like, what's going on for you right now with online education and your kids? Um, and we'll just leave that open for, I don't know, 10 minutes and see how that goes. Who wants to say how you're feeling, what you're thinking? Let's start with other people here after we've introduced the five of us. Then we'll get back to the neo the uh, geo inquiry process and see if there's any help there for our issues and our worries but we'd like to hear some of your issues and i can call on people but i don't want to just <laughs> <laughs>
You have to be a Zoom listener. It may, it may be, it may help. Janet, you jump in and tell us what's going on in San Diego. There we go. I knew you were going to pick on me. You knew uh, that. I well, did. Uh, we are um, pretty stressed out right now. Where uh, are you and what's going? Where? Are you? Oh, I'm in San. I'm oh, sorry. I'm hi. My name is Janet Ilko. I'm in San Diego, California. I teach at a um, health sciences high school. It's about seven, um, 720 kids, grades eight through twelve. My program is independent study. Um, we got the notice um, Friday afternoon that we would not be coming back until April 6th. The governor just said haphazardly on Twitter yesterday, um, he's a democratic version of some other person right now I'm not very happy with, um, that we might not be back the rest of the year, but he doesn't yeah, know. I, so I saw that. Call in panic mode, he was I just guess. talking to his daughter. Come on. Yeah, just, you know, really, we should just put that out there. So um, there's not a lot of well-planned things going on. I feel like I work in an independent study. Most of my students have access. Um, we're at the point of a lot of questions. A lot of, um, we've been directed to kind of just hold still right now. So we we're going to come together. Um, this week as a staff and we can't because you can't have more than 10 people in a room in California right now and then you have to be six feet away and um, it's being shut down I know for everyone else so I think what I would say is we're in a little bit of panic um, the biggest thing for me to be here tonight is to talk about real learning as opposed to throwing things out there I'm lucky to instruct I'm digitally a lot with my students and so actually in our whole school my kids are probably the best set up for this situation. Um, I do online coursework for independent study for about 32 of our kids but that leaves 600. So I would say we're being thoughtful because our school in particular is really focused on what instructional things are happening um, and there's a lot of concern about, um, I work in an urban school like many of you and our students have a lot of responsibilities. So what I've been noticing on Twitter that's really frustrating me is, oh, I'm holding class from eight to two or I'm doing this and I'm doing all these cool things where I know my students might be picking this up on their phone, have job responsibilities that they can't get, um, they're now responsible for kids in their home. I just am really here to listen and to um, try and find some actual opportunities for kids like on the LRNG that I've done before that they could do on their own. That would actually be learning and creating as opposed to some of the stuff I've seen coming out already. So there you go. Cool. Well, I, I, I realize that waiting for you to volunteer is not going to work. So Diane, <laughs> let me just call yeah. <laughs> well, and I, I kind of just oh, joined up. Um, can go you ahead. hear me? Yes. I think okay. we have two Dianes here, but go ahead. Yeah. Daniel, go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. I kind of just joined up a, a couple minutes ago, so I just caught the tail end of that. I, I'd say, um, well, I guess quick introduction. I work at a um, school called Bishop Miege in Kansas City, and uh, the state of Kansas just called off school for the rest of the year. Um, wait, wait, for, for the rest of the semester, you mean? For, or yeah, for the rest but, of the okay, semester. Okay, but I got you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, wow. yeah. At yeah. least it's clear. But go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I'd say I'm, I'm definitely in the same boat. I'm looking for ways to get students engaged and have them creating uh, rather than just bombarding them with, you know, information. And um, so, so really, I'm just in a position where I'm, I'm looking for ideas and and suggestions on how to go about, you know, the rest of the year. As far as directions from administration go, they're, they're, they were thrown into this as well. So yeah. uh, we haven't, you know, received like a clear path yet. We're still kind of waiting on that. Cool, thanks. Yeah. Diane or anybody else who interrupts before she talks. Go ahead. <laughs> so Daniel, uh, I actually just live a few blocks from Bishop Miege, so. Good to see you. Uh, I've got Kansas City in the house tonight. Go ahead. Um, I am actually a little bit, have been on sabbatical for the last couple of months uh, from at Kansas City Public Schools. So I am kind of in the luxury point of being able to kind of observe this, uh, but I'm sure I'll be pulled back into the mix here very quickly. Um, 
I am in a kind of a unique position that I not only teach English, I teach English writing to uh, students who've been in the US less than two years. Mm -hmm. And uh, last, as the school year started, I was working on a project with Katie Klein of the Greater Kansas City Write Writing Project, creating playlists. And it was a challenge creating playlists that especially ESL students could do um, on their own. I've long been a G Suite Google Classroom user and recorded lessons so that especially ESLs can go back and review a lesson again and again, but actually trying to write a playlist that they could manipulate um, satisfactorily without the resource of a teacher actually being there to help them with the language component proved to be very, very challenging. So um, I'm here really just to kind of get up to speed with what's happening with everyone else and to, um, yeah, just see what kind of things are happening out there in the world, whether it's Netflix party and how can we use that to, you know, create group situations for our kids or um, Ed Puzzle or whatever it happens to be. Cool. I don't want to put anybody out on the spot, um, and I do want to end this in three minutes. I'm kind of watching the clock, but um, other comments? Um, how, how is it with you? Anybody having a great time already? <laughs> or you don't have to go there. But any, any kind of different kind of thoughts anybody wants to throw in? Well, I'm here for a very different reason. Uh, I'm no longer in the classroom. My name is Linda Brock. Hi to all my Kansas City folks. It's great to see you. Um, I, so I work with teachers mostly now doing PD through the Greater Kansas City Writing Project and some of my own work. But I got a very panicked call yesterday from my sister whose company went to mandatory at-home work. And um, she reached out to me and said, look, we're trying to think of ways to support all of our workers who now have to try to work and take care of teaching kids and how, what do we do? And she said, can you help in any way? So I, you know, I put together a blog post today with a whole bunch of resources just to get them started and some tips for like how to create a schedule and, you know, those little things. But I love what you said, Janet. I want to give them information about real learning versus keeping busy. So I thought this might be a really great place to uh, get some great tips and help me pass on to other other parents. I'll say hello real quick. My name is Corinne Ahrens. I am also from the Greater Kansas City Writing Project. I'm in Blue Springs, Missouri, right outside of Kansas City. And I am a K-5 elementary instructional coach. And um, right now, we as instructional coaches are charged with trying to, um, we just made 7,000 packets. <laughs> of um, things to send home with K-5 students who don't have devices. We are not yet one-to-one. -one. And so that is proving to be challenging. Um, and how do you, how do we, we did a lot of choice boards so that students could still, we use the workshop model in Blue Springs. And so, so students um, aren't inundated with a packet of busy work. So kind of the same struggle, just different. Um, but I am definitely here to learn. I do have a lens for K-12 and I work with the other coaches. So I'm just really excited to learn from you all tonight. But your, your students are what, how old? They're K-5? Uh, primarily I work K through five. So we have pre-K through fifth grade. And, and in my home, I have a five-year-old and a 10-year-old. So I'm going okay. to be homeschooling a kindergartner and a fifth grader, so. All the resources you all have, I'm just soaking them all up from a mom and a teacher perspective tonight. How does it look different for a mom and a teacher? Do you, think? you know, um, up until this point, personally speaking, and everybody else can pipe in, um, my kids see me as mom. They don't see me as a teacher. And I've taught a lot of other students how to read. And um, mine just really gravitate towards their teachers that they have relationships with in the school setting. So it's going to be... Um, an interesting dynamic that fits that are thrown for me are not thrown at school. Um, for my five-year-old, there are power struggles that 
they don't see at school that I see at home. And right now we're on spring break. So the true um, teacher mom has not started instruction until Monday. We have schedules in place right now. We're trying to do, you know, all of these gracious professionals that are um, teaching us through the internet, you know, Mo Willems, we did his lunch doodle today, you know, things of this nature, but um, yeah, I just really am, am here to learn. So thank you for this platform to- Cool, cool. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Uh, Chris Sloan, why don't you jump in? Um, if you, Are you still here? Yeah. Oh, good, good, I here. can't find you. So uh, Chris, you were, uh, educating online tonight in Salt Lake, or today in Salt Lake City, and what happened? <laughs> um, yeah, so we did have an earthquake today. It was a 5.7 <laughs> uh, magnitude. So our, you know, things shook pretty good. Uh, and then we've had some aftershocks since then. So that added, you know, maybe a little bit of anxiety to the students. Um, but, you know, we talked it through. And Wait, so uh, you're, you're still in school with students? Yes. So okay. we, yeah. just a quick chronology. We, sure. last Thursday, um, we got the word that things were going to go online. And so it was coincidentally the end of our quarter. So it worked out well in that regard. And then we had an in-service day the next day that was supposed to be a system-wide thing, but then we actually just went to school. Uh, so I teach in a high school, nine through 12, that's about, you know, 600 students. So I think the size makes it maybe a little more manageable because we're not this massive system. Um, and so we just uh, met and said, what are the best practices that we know of so far? And uh, we all crafted an email message to the students and the parents on how we were going to proceed. Uh, so we sent that out Friday um, because Monday we were, you know, we started uh, Monday. Um, then I sent another thing out Sunday, a little clarification. So here's what I'd like to do the first two days of school. So first day, students actually were able to come back and um, get books and things like that um, because- That was uh, Monday. Yeah, so that was Monday. And so I told them on that day, um, I would just, I was in my classroom. They didn't really come in. They may have poked their head in the door and said hello, but they basically came and got their stuff and left. And, and so it was pretty good social distancing just by random, uh, having people just show up and get their stuff. Uh, Tuesday we started conferences, so we use Canvas, and I started uh, Tuesday with conferences, and basically the point there was just to see how things are going with them, so to check in and, um, you know, it was almost like, you know, those, I think we talked about it last week, uh, I treated Tuesday as like the first five minutes of my class, and so that's all about social interaction and just like, hey, how you doing, and reading people, uh, like you can tell if someone's had a bad day or if they're anxious or they've got good news or that kind of thing. So today and yesterday, we're on a modified block schedule. So anyway, I met with half of the classes today and half yesterday. And uh, we just spent time um, going through the interface. So I was like, okay, can everyone use the chat? Can everyone turn on your microphone? Let me hear you. Let, let's tell me what's going on in your life in a nutshell. Now I want you all to mute your microphone. Oh, okay. Yeah. How's that working? Right. Okay. Uh, can you... This yeah. was on a Zoom or where, where was this it? This is on Canvas. I mean, on it could Canvas. just as easily... Some of the teachers are using Zoom. Okay, but it's a Canvas video. Yeah, it's a video, you know. Chat. Okay. Same thing yeah, yeah, Zoom, okay. really. Mm -hmm. um, and so I uh, said, okay, I'm going to share my screen. Can everybody see my screen? Um, and um, got some confirmation there. Uh, I really, for the most part, will not need them to share their webcam, um, but they all pretty much know how to use that. And these are sophomores through seniors, by the way. So they're, you know, you'd think they would be pretty good there. Um, and um, then I just said, well, here's a couple of assignments over the next week. And the first couple of assignments are really about coronavirus. So they are, um, you know, documenting how things are going in your world right now via photography. So I teach English composition, AP English, and then um, photography and media production. So the media students are gonna put together a one to three minute video of just how their life has changed, you know, how this global pandemic has impacted their lives so far. Uh, just first person point of view stuff. Uh, they can also write it, 
they can podcast it. Yeah. So that's kind of where I am. And I would say just to backtrack one step, I forgot about um, in my email, my initial email, I said to them, I need you to reply to me. I want to know how you're doing, but I also want to know that you got this message. So right away I could tell like who's not getting the message. And I was able to follow up right away with like, okay, these people have not got back to me yet. So I'm going to call the parents or what have you. So there was the initial email was there was an uh, operative moment where, you know, they ha had to actually communicate back to me. So I know they got the message and really that took care of quite a few of them that way. So really I would say the beginning things were more about just like interpersonal things. How are you? Um, tell me if you're scared or upset or that kind of thing or you're happy, you know, some of them are just dancing around their living rooms and with glee, you know, it's like, <laughs> I can do this forever. Yeah. So Chris, I gotta say, um, it's, it's fascinating to hear how calm you are about all this. And <laughs> I yeah. just, but yeah. Wait. Well, well, you, I mean, your kids can those, all like get to you. Like you can no, hold yeah. class at the same time. Sorry. So you can hold class, like you can say class is from eight to nine thirty. And yeah, they all come. They, they will uh, appear when I want to do a synchronous thing, but I don't imagine that the majority of my time is going to be synchronous with the whole group. Okay. Um, and so the rest of the time, like tomorrow and Friday, I'm going to be uh, holding office hours, and they can contact me during those times. But I don't need to see them all because I gave them an initial writing assignment and a reading assignment in the English classes. Okay. And every teacher is doing that, right? Different teachers are doing different things. And when we loop back to it, I actually asked my classes today to give me some feedback, you know, like what are students' best practices and advice for each other? Um, so we can loop back to that. Um, because not all teachers are doing that. Some teachers are actually overwhelming them with work, especially in the sciences and math. Um, they're finding that they're doing all the stuff they would normally do in a class, which is not as efficient for them as when they did it in class. Mm -hmm. And then they're doing their homework too. So they are saying uh, they are, um, you know, getting more work than they did when they were in school. And that's causing some stress for them too, because also, you know, the tech doesn't always work <laughs> right. as it turns out. And so that adds a layer to their frustration and confusion too. Because they were saying like, I'm get, one kid said, I'm getting a barrage of emails and it's hard for me to organize and prioritize. So mm -hmm. that's a skill too. It's like that, you know, that was one of the best practices that the students talked about today. Um, yeah, so that's kind of how my week has gone. Anybody and, else wanna jump in on Chris and Janet's? I mean, Janet, sounds like you're, I, so I, I'm consulting in two different schools. They're three miles apart. They're both in the Bronx. One of them is like way different than the other. Um, one of them, I'm, I'm able to do these. Kind of, uh, so far, I've had one meeting so far. But mm -hmm. it looks like I'm going to be able to gather them all together at the same time as the class met in Zoom. And we already have an online sort of course going on that at the other school the kids don't have access to the internet. They don't have, you know, we can't, at least we can't know they do. They, they don't have computers, we know that. Um, you know, they're not allowed back into the school to get the packets that have been prepared for them on paper. I'm like the difference between those two schools. Mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm, Chris, as much as, so as much as I hear your calm, and I did hear what you said here at the end, that you know, even for those kids, it's a, an adjustment. But the difference between our most vulnerable, hard press kids and like the kids you're working with is gonna be dramatic, I think. Well, the, I wouldn't say already, all but, of them fit into that category. You know, what I'm yeah, trying I, to suss out are who, who are the ones that um, are most vulnerable right now. And so, yeah, but I would say to, to generalize, yeah, I think I'm in a better place generally. But, yeah. Well, and I don't think, I think the conversation has to be, and it's not about better place, worse place, you know, yeah. it, it's real problems either way, right? Like I have concerns with those teachers dumping all that work on kids to teach themselves. That doesn't make a lot of sense. Like when your kids are stressed, 
I just got a text from my student, which is why you saw me freak out a little bit. She goes, I just got a call saying, you know, from the school saying it's possible we won't be back, but that's because she's misinterpreting the news. You know what I mean? So my world is like this, phone calls, texts, kids really, really stressed out. And that for me is super concerning. And that's just coming from the state on down, like our state, like you're, you were still in school, we've been out, you know, it's just really confusing. So I'm just kind of texting my principals, sending a little message going, just got this text from a student, not sure where they're getting their information. So it's, I love your office hours. I love how you structured rolling it out. That was super helpful to hear. Because for me, that's what I'm going to have to do with my staff. Just my, like, how are we going to fix my 30 kids? Like, I can't fix everything, but I'm going to get these guys graduated. I'm super concerned about our seniors mm -hmm. that are in an independent study program. We weren't slated to do two more classes in two more months, right? So I've got to find a way to get them through. That's not fair. I can't say to you, oh, you're not graduating. I mean, that's not going to work. So we're going to have to come up with something. It's, well, um, if I can chime in, hi please. everyone. Introduce Kirsten, yourself, please. Kirsten Dirks. Uh, I am a reading intervention and eighth grade English teacher in the Shawnee Mission School District. So I am eye to eye with Daniel on the whole. Hey, yesterday, whoop, you're not going back to school for the rest of the year. That was very much of a rug pulled out from underneath your feet. The kids left for spring break, and now all of a sudden they can't go back to school. We had no time to up, you know, to front load the kids, talk to them about how to do stuff. Um, and so that kind of panicky, how do I teach reading intervention remotely without having talked to my kids prior to them not seeing me in person? is very like ah. i'm with you <laughs> you know i i um i'm a i work with co-teachers a lot you know i teach 10th grade and um i've been talking to a lot of special ed folk in my class who are you know servicing those students who have collaborative co-taught needs um and you know it's, it's like that's another whole question mark and i you know i'm looking at our message board here about like um, collaborating plus content. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's some great ideas there too. I also think though, you know, there is anxiety. Everybody is just very tense. Um, I, I was on a chat with my principal and some other teachers. You know, I think the administration across the country is just trying to figure out what do we do in a week? You know, mm -hmm. it really, it's been a week. And, you know, um, there we can't use video in our sessions. That really, they're really, they're really, you know, sketched out about this for some reason. Um, so, you know, and I think they're working through it. And I think that one of the things I kind of heard from one of the administrators today was to say that the students are kind of asking for us, you know, to be there a little bit more. And even today in my one lesson, I just have a Google Doc that I've had all year. That's just like my lesson plan. And so it's really easy to adapt to this for me. I'm there already. But um, I have a little comment thread on the side and the students were like, are you gonna do a video chat? I tested using video um, YouTube live stream. Like I just ran down the hall, turned it on before we left, stuff, see if it worked. And, and so today they were like, are you gonna live stream? That was more fun. And I, it's like, I can just imagine them sitting on the other end there and I'm kind of sitting on the other end and I'm not really inter interacting with them. We don't have chat functionality and you know, they're in the middle of writing something right now, but you know, as we go through this, as we go on, you know, weeks from now, if we're still there, um, I'm going to be looking to invent some new ideas for sure. You know, to kind of facilitate this new environment. You know, we're we're in a new environment for sure. I am just noticing. Um, Christina posted the link about Philly schools over there, and. Um, I'm in a very similar situation and it's interesting to hear what everybody else is doing because I am not allowed to post any um, suggested assignments on my own classes Google Classroom page they have to be submitted to the district where they get um, added to a suggestion 
suggested activities page for all science um, across both high schools. Wait, you're um, not allowed to communicate with your students yourself? I can email my, I'm, I'm expected to email my students um, yeah. three times a week, but I'm not allowed to um, provide any type of um, suggested work in those emails other than saying you might want to take a look at the enrichment activities offered on this district website. Wow. Um, so it's very interesting. We, I you know, we can't do this. <laughs> no, it's, it's very, it's very odd. Um, that's a problem. But, yeah, but it makes sense too, though, right? That like, cause I'm sitting yeah. here listening and I'm thinking to myself, <laughs> if you can't, if you can't provide something to everybody, you can't provide it just to the kids who have access to it. I mean, how big do you want the achievement gap to get, you know, like how, how, how much inequity do you want to create? in the midst mm -hmm. of this and so i mean I, i'm reading the the philadelphia thing and i'm both sort of like holy cow and i'm also thinking like oh yeah that makes complete sense so can somebody summarize the philadelphia thing because i didn't get the you, uh, philly is not uh christine uh, school district of philadelphia will not allow here i'll read the first sentence it's sure. a good, good lead i could go long okay. school district okay. philadelphia will not allow teachers to do remote instruction with students while schools are closed during the coronavirus outbreak Wow. Because the district cannot ensure equal access to technology among students, it's barring individual schools from providing graded virtual instruction. Yep. And, and see, if my school took it, or my district took it a step further, and we're not allowed to provide any, um, you know, no graded assignments at all. Everything has to be optional, but we're also not allowed to um, advance instruction at all. We're not permitted to make suggest i can't even send out a link to an article that i think my students might find interesting um it's it's Whoa. really difficult to um it's really difficult to navigate i'm not really sure what this is going to look like for us they created these online learning guides it looks like with the intention that parents and caregivers can use them um so the yeah a is the philadelphia school district yeah so mm -hmm. i'm i'm really i mean i post i noticed people posting this today and tomorrow i'm talking with teachers in philly because we were actually phil whip the writing project was working at a, a school uh, or a couple of schools and i was working with them so um anyway i'll try to get a sense of what this really looks like but it's helpful to carry what for you because it's Christine, what's going on in San Francisco? Or do you know, in Berkeley, do you know what the schools are doing? She'll need to unmute. We're... I just was curious. I mean, in California, we're kind of all over the place. So I was curious. They're in the biggest lockdown right now, health-wise. Right. No? Yeah, right. my my family in San, in San Francisco is on the, what is it, the shelter in place? The shelter in place. Order right now. <laughs> And my son is uh, in medical school. This is a side. He just got graduated <laughs> four weeks early because they they can't go either. They were like, okay, you're done. Um, wow. He's going to be an ER doc. It's really interesting. So I guess we have to put all that in perspective too. It's like we have students and people with life and death situations, right? I mean, they're, or they're shelter in place or they're wherever. So I think we all have to give ourselves a lot of grace um, in this situation because it's not something we've ever experienced before. I know we're in San Diego, they're talking about possibly going to, we we're down to all the bars and restaurants are closed, all the, um, all those kind, you know, you can't be out. They're talking about when you can't be out, um, no more than 10 people. I mean, those are things that are really worrying our kids as well. So I think my connection, my goal in this time with kids is to give them a place to read and write and talk about their fears and their expectations and what they're going through and to connect, which is how I use LRNG and Youth Voices in the first place, you know, to mm -hmm. give them a space. And I can't imagine being in Philadelphia not able to do that, you know, that, wow, that gives me perspective when I was all fired up and now I'm like, hey, I don't have that. You know, I was thinking like, what would I do if I didn't have connectedness with my students, right? So there's two students that haven't checked in out of all my classes. Um, and I, you know, that, that's the question mark. And these are two students that I would be worried about. But I'm just thinking about some of these stories I'm hearing from you all where, you know, 
really don't have any connectedness with many students. Um, and it's just like, I was just thinking about my, my kids, right? They're, they're in my school district. My, I have a five-year-old and a seven-year-old. And we've really been given those packets. And I think someone said they were here from K through five. And it's given, really interesting. They've been given packets of printed work. material to work on. Actually, we have to print it. And my printer's down. So that's another whole <laughs> layer, right? You know? Okay, but, go ahead. Um, but, you know, I, I'm not like, I know that I can develop things for them. But it's just like sitting around the table with my wife, who's also a psychologist, school psychologist. And she doesn't have to do as much intense work as I do, let's say. And just watching her negotiate with them, I'm thinking about the parents of, of you know, I'm seeing these memes on Facebook of these parents now becoming teachers too. And I, I think that, you know, above and beyond, um, <clears throat> it was like your point about just like being there, making connections is really the most important thing. And like, I'm not worried about due dates. I'm not worried about grades. I, you know, come and get me administrators like, the, and I don't think they're going to, you know, like, no, I'm just going to really not. keep it. I think everybody is very much in a spooked situation. Like, what, what's going to happen next, you know? And, and that's right now where we are. Um, and as I think if we're here, like as Kansas, right? Oh, my goodness, right? If we're going to be here through the end for a long time like this, um, I am kind of like interested in seeing like, what are my boundaries going to be in my district? What am I they going to not let me do? You know, I got to be like this. So for example, are they going to let me stray from my curriculum? Um, how far can I go? So I was going to do a poetry unit. And now it's just like, let's just, yeah, we'll write poetry is about this moment, right? I mean, like, I'm just going to make it happen. And then maybe bring in like LRNG to think about some inquiry projects, which are inevitably going to be about this moment too. And I think that that would help students because, you know, not only do they need to like deal with their worry and all that anxiety, they also need that hope. And I think that, you know, there's some projects that we can do with them as many as we can, right? Um, and for those other students, let's send them some just old school composition books, man. Like, let's, let's just, like, how do we get a GoFundMe? Like, those are the kind of things, too, you know? Like, how can we reach out to those communities that are, you know, going to become education deserts? That's, that's So I, I, I want to, I mean, I, I, Chris said this, too, and a couple of others did, too. But you just said you're worried about the two kids who, who are not connecting. And that's my concern too. Like the kids who are going to reach out and say, I want to be connected. I'm like, we can, we can probably figure this out for them. But what about those vulnerable kids who, who are like, you know what? This is, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how to reach out to those kids. Well, the cracks that kids fall through have gotten much, much wider, much, much wider. So I, I, I was hesitating to bring that up because I don't have an answer to it, but um yeah so without getting i think we need to remember if we get 15 kids on the screen uh, during a class that's great but where are the other five yeah. you know mm -hmm. what's happening to those five and i i think about the phone call to the parent about like just this student who didn't show up but then like just in the future things i'm gonna have to call parents about and just like adding that layer of anxiety of just regular life on top of them with this you know like that's something I'm thinking about, you know, how do I get a student engaged without adding another layer, you know, it, it, it makes me think like, what am I offering that is good? Like what, it, why is it good for the kid to go look at a screen for an hour and a half with me? Right. Why, mm -hmm. What, you know, and I, I really have to have that answer. Well, and, and I feel like too, there's a, there's an opportunity here. Well, there's two opportunities. One is I think we're going to be the most appreciated profession in about six months. I think every parent's going to be willing to give every teacher a raise. I think Amen that's happened that. So I think we're going to, we just need to wait for our moment and then strike when the iron's hot. But um, <laughs> the other thing I think is that a lot of the anxiety feels like it comes from a place that's like, um, and I, I don't know how to say this in it in the other way, but it's like, how do I get to keep doing what I've always done? without meeting kids in school and the answer might be you can't right mm -hmm. that the 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 online is a different place and so it isn't going to just be the same and i think that's hard sometimes for people to hear and i and i agree that like in the first moments here it's all about connection and helping kids sort of cope with where they are but that's 
I think we're going to be in the middle of this longer than that. You oh. know, I, I think we're going to be dealing with online instruction after that wave of trauma and anxiety sort of passes. And then it's going to be like, well, how do we do school here? Um, I, yeah, I mean, have you heard, I've been hearing some teachers say, well, well who have been closed for a week or so now. One teacher in particular said to me, um, I put all the assignments out and, and they finished them. <laughs> it's like, you know, so now what? <laughs> so well, and so it, and I it think makes that's going to happen. Like they, you know, the, the, yeah. Well, well, and that's the thing is, are you a teacher or are you an assigner of work? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. You know, and that becomes your the, class the hit, question. Uh, yeah, I'm so with you because, and that's why I asked Chris, I was so excited that your kids actually come at the same time. I know not everything can be, but for me, that's already what I see with my students is life's happening. And when you get the mixed message from the district of we're on hold, we're on hold. Well, my kids, you're already struggled to come to school. That's how I got them in the first place, right? So I'm on my phone every day texting, how are you? What's going on in your life? And I agree with you that, yeah, you can only text for so long. I have to get these guys done and finished and access. And my biggest concern at the end of this is people think that teaching is just purely assignment driven because there will be so many teachers that I know already, I won't say names, but a couple, not that I teach with, but that I know that are like, oh, I'm not doing that online thing. They can just go on a website. They literally are saying like, oh, go on to uh, read a book, do this and go on a website, have a good time. We can't grade it anyway. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh my God. And then I have my daughter who teaches second so, grade who's crying last night because she goes, I've got these kids I just got to read. What am I going to do? Mm -hmm. They don't have books. I didn't get to give them blah, 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 because we were shut down two hours after we got out of school. So I don't know. So, guys. Jen, yeah. I, want, I want to try to identify what you said you liked what Chris was saying and you want to do because I think I want important. to be able to um, what, how Chris onboarded his kids. Like even if I do that one on one with my kids, how you onboarded, had that conversation, ran through the, the program with them, I think that's critical. I think um, because then it doesn't really matter. If they're not there, you can catch up with them, right? But that And their office hours are the same thing where I can send a text out to my kids going, I'm going to be in front of my computer between this time and this time. You can always text me if you need access to a test or whatever, but I will be here at this time talking about this, try and come. Or that but that whole idea of onboarding chris i loved how you organized that and then i want to be able to send out to my families here's what we're doing and in my situation it's going to be different because i my kids are all in different courses and whatever but that you just gave me a frame to use right now where i'm like okay i can call that parent find out what's going on in life and let's create a plan and move forward because that's how to start was really stressful for me but i really liked what you said about that and the, the one thing that um, came out of today is I asked them, like, what advice do you have for each other? Uh, like, what things have you learned so far that have helped you? And again, I realized the span of experiences we have here where, like, you know, some teachers can't assign anything. But I would say probably the piece of advice that transcends all our situations is that they said we need to look out for each other. The student said, like, we have to reach out to those people that we know, those students that we know don't have the connectivity. And I think it's, you know, I guess I could be blasted for saying something like this, I guess, but it is a real life skill to in these days figure out how to get things done, you know, and I know that's easier said than done. And I understand everybody's context is different, but, uh, you know, I teach really, really disadvantaged immigrant children and they're looking out for um you know like someone said oh i can talk to that person and i can see if i can get i can see if i can get uh that person like over to my house they're friends already that's not a geiger counter is it <laughs> no. <laughs> sorry I love it. I love it. no you're right right so um there there were two kids sitting next to each other that are um you know definitely do not have much and uh, the one was able to connect today, um, but you know her task is to try to figure out what's happening with her friend. And I can do that too, but um, there's a language barrier with the folks, and you know that kind of thing that she can break through. 
And so I thought it was pretty amazing that the kids said, you know, we need to look out for each other and we need to help each other through this because it's not all just teachers trying to solve it. So Chris, I, 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 let, me, let me just second that. That's exactly how I was feeling too with the kids uh, at Ellis. Like they're already reaching out to each other but it's not kind of organized. I feel like I want to organize it and say, okay, you four need to keep looking after. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Know? I just, so, explained and, then, it. and then, and then it does get, so it does get to the two who, who haven't checked in yet. Cause mm -hmm. we can say, okay, in your group are those two who haven't checked in. Can you help us? You know, so yeah, spreading this with the youth taking care of each other. Mm -hmm. some way makes a lot of sense to me yes. and like structuring that and you just said that's their assignment now like right giving giving credit for for that work also feels like you know, yeah yeah do and i before we left i just said like this is a challenge for you all like in life you're gonna have to figure things out and for some it's going to be easier than others but you know we've got each other and let's see if we can figure it out. And, and today I thought it was like just beautiful. This kid said, you know, we have to look out for each other and we have to care for each other. And it's like, oh, okay. Has anybody been wanting to check in here? Jump in. Harry, what's going on where you are? Um, yeah. <laughs> Introduce I'm, yourself. I don't think you've said hi yet. We got it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> nice um, to see uh, you again. I've been texting the whole time with three students on my phone right now. Yeah, oh, it's really? So funny. Yeah. Assignments. Yeah. It's just so funny while you're listening. I'm like, blah, 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 blah. They're yeah, doing, yeah. yeah, they're doing stuff like on their phone because they don't have a computer, but they're able to do it. So you, mm -hmm. like exactly what Chris said though, they're figuring it out. They're like, I don't have a computer, but I got a phone. So if you can help me do this much, I can do this much. And they're actually getting done, which is kind of cool. Yeah, I mean, I'm from Delaware. Um, I was an English teacher for a while. And then uh, I went to Mexico to teach American school down there. And I was able to get my library degree. So when I came back, I uh, basically in the library facilitate um, things that I used to wish I had when I was a teacher. So it's kind of cool. You know? And I don't know, I dabble in a bunch of stuff. So yeah, cool. I don't know. Great to have you here tonight. Thanks. <laughs> Harry, can I ask you, um, if you had office hours with kids, could you point them to those resources that the district has approved? Does that work as a teaching moment? Who are you asking? I was asking Carrie. Oh, Carrie. Okay, okay. yeah, it's like that. Oh, um, we've been, Sorry. yeah, we've been, um, I can email and say, check out these resources that the district has provided. We've been discouraged mm -hmm. from any kind of um, video type. Oh, really? Any kind of communication. Is there a reason why? Uh, well, Rich has been discouraged too. Yeah. yeah. What, what is the reasoning? I'm just curious. So, um, legal just fear of litigation, I think. Yeah, I, I've, you know, I live in an affluent town with a lot of um, legal issues always, you know, circulating and it. So there, that's it. And, and, you know, like I'll give you an example, which I can't really imagine happening, but let's see, you know, uh, um, student B is in his bedroom in his underwear, you know, like, and then other students have to see that what happens, you know, there's no way uh, okay. of that, but yet we facilitated it. Mm -hmm. You know. Right. Well, and, and I'm also, uh, this may be way off base, but I'm also thinking legally about sped students' minutes and how how are they getting any services on their IEPs. And, and that may be another reason why you can't do graded work. You can't do a lot of the stuff that would be. That was um, one of the reasons we were given. Explain that again. I don't understand. Well, when you build an IEP, you build in or minutes yeah, or a 504, you build in minutes that the student receives um, services. And so if they're doing virtual learning, how are you providing those minutes? Because if we're going to provide instruction, we also have to provide the minutes. Or other accommodations. Or, that, or yeah, we have to provide yeah, the accommodations. Right. And and so that that's probably another reason there's breaks. I bet that's a big reason in Philly. Mm -hmm. I mean, oh, yeah. the like deep, just fundamental inequity. Because if you start sending, you know, assignments out, but the kid has a, yeah, anyway, I don't have to go through detail. 
you know, and that's why, you know, as we progress this, I think there's going to be different solutions to those problems, but you know, they're there. And, and I, I know teachers in my district too, that are just doing the video conference, especially those kinds of like school counselors or school psychologists, they're just doing it. They're just reaching out. And it's like, I, I love that they're, their spirit for that because like sometimes just if it works and the students want it and the students are used to it I, I think it's just a matter of again districts and leaders just kind of catching their breath a, a lot you know they just had to you know my district they had to write this report and send it out to the state and get a waiver and then you know they're probably just under so much pressure that just like actually and they're just like kind of looking to teachers just like all right just Go do your thing for a minute. We'll come back to you in a second, right? I'll be right with you, you know? Yeah, except that if they come back and say, you can't do all that stuff you just came up with, you know, I'm like, whoa. I don't know. Well, and I guess that's kind of where the stuff, like I think about the playlist stuff and I think about designing experiences. And in one way, if you can cut the... I, I don't anticipate needing to meet with a class. That that seems to be the problem, right? Is that if I'm meeting with a class and I, if, if you were my class and this is what my class looked like from now on, it's not really that different from regular school, which then means all of the same rules apply. But if I'm designing experiences in my Google Classroom that look a little bit like playlist experiences, and there's instruction, but the instruction's accessible and I can build in some scaffolding. And there's, I don't know, it feels like if you build it with different pieces, there's a way to cut out some of that. Um, like you're not gonna have that problem. Like, like the, the answer to how do you keep kids from seeing each other in their underwear when you're doing something like this is don't do something like this. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I also feel like a performative aspect of like, you know, I'm constantly like realizing I'm in this box, students are looking at me, and they're looking in the screen. And when they look into the screen, they are entertained. And now I am on the other side of the screen, feeling the need to entertain a little bit, you know, and I'm like, do I run with that? I could, but is that appropriate? I think it would be good. But I don't think my district would like it all the time, you know, so or for other reasons it might not be good accessibility issues you know am i actually doing a good job in my performance you know like just as you are when you're teaching in a regular classroom you're thinking about those special need learners are you getting them are, are you getting them? well listening to the two of you i makes me realize that school districts are really they're they're in this juxtaposition of for how many years have they been building these firewalls and keeping kids off of certain sites? And now suddenly, hey, it's fair game because you just got to teach. And whatever tool the kids can access now, the district has, districts have suddenly, I mean, those firewalls are kind of meaningless now, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, well, I think the role of the teacher. I don't know if they are. Too. It sounds like in Philadelphia and Michigan, they're coming back. And I was going to say, I wouldn't yeah. say that in. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that's their struggle is that kids can get to everywhere. And then are you legally responsible? And how does that work? I mean, I do think we, we've hit a, a whole thing with special needs and the minutes and all those types of things. Um, it's really made me think about, you know, how do we, how do we develop this? What are we doing? And I think maybe that's why, Chris, so many people are in the check-in part right now of check, just checking in with my kids because we're all kind of in a holding pattern waiting to make sure that you don't do what you're not supposed to do, right? There, there is that, that digital piece. Like this is all documented, right? They're going to see me say whatever I just said and someone can pull that up and use that information or misuse that. And I think districts are afraid. And I think there's also a political knee-jerk reaction and then I also think there's no toilet paper in our country, so we're not thinking clearly right now. I mean, people are not responding in a good way, right? I don't know if there's toilet paper shortage, but California, it's our new thing. I don't know why we all think we do. I've been, I've been looking for a week. <laughs> I'm like, I don't, I don't get it, but. My in-laws handed me an extra, like, huge package of toilet paper, and it was the greatest gift I've ever received. Like, <laughs> my mother-in-law was like, hey, look, we had this extra thing in the basement, so and I was just like, ooh! <laughs> <laughs> so, 
Ultra okay. gentle. I just, I just want to, I just want to come back though for a second. And I hear all the problems, but I also hear Janet. You said it earlier that it's about connecting youth. Right. They, they don't need to just connect with us. They need to connect with each other. So we've got to figure out structures for that. It may not be this video thing. And it may be youth voices and it may be now comment, it may be other, you know, tools that we're already using. But we've got to focus on them finding each other um, and kind of sharing that responsibility with each other. Have you seen, and, have you guys seen what Kelly Gallagher's doing? He's been putting a lot of um, really great lessons out there about connecting with kids, about writing about the situation. And his entire opening piece this week was, this is a time in history that will never exist again. And students should be reading and writing about it. And that made me calm, where I thought if I start with nothing else, and we did do something, Paul, I like what you just said about no comment, and you put some things on there that people can talk with. Um, and maybe stay away from this digital, you know, the video piece for now. That being said, my school, we have Flipgrid and every teacher left a message on a Flipgrid and the kids can Flipgrid us back and forth. But I'm also at a charter school, which makes it different. But every teacher right now has a Flipgrid message up there and we sent the link to every student, hoping that they will access that for that connect piece. But I do like your now comment idea. I do like finding ways for them to connect with each other because that is what I'm getting on my phone. That's what I'm getting from my kids. Yeah. They don't care about the rest of it. And just to say, Dan, Dan Dorenberg did write a very one pagey um, how to get started with your class on now comment. So if anybody's mm -hmm. ready to do that, that's right at the top of nowcomment.com. Um, so that's one little piece we can offer. Um, We will continue. <laughs> Anybody want to? <laughs> well, I mean, we might. I thought, I thought we, we should have do. ended with toilet paper, or that would have been really. <laughs> um, but we, but we'll know more next week, right? I mean, I think districts. Will we? People are going to be. I think there'll be at least more direction. It'll be different next week. Yes. Right. For sure. <laughs> yeah. So we could all stay tuned, right, till next Wednesday. I don't but know. Better, I think so. <laughs> I mean, I am interested in what Jeff was saying. I don't know if we want to dig into the playlists and I, I don't know. It seems like it's really hard to figure out. Everybody's in a really different place right now, so. See, are they in school with you? Are their kids in school? No, not in Berkeley, right? Everybody's. What's the, what's the dist what are the districts saying there in San Francisco area? What are they saying? I'm in Philly. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, that's who you were. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you're you're in the midst of um, that. I'm in Berkeley. You're in Berkeley. What are they saying? Yeah. Well, the governor of California just announced that we may not be coming back to school, which was news to everybody in Berkeley, right. uh, which I think has added a lot of confusion. Anna, um, you should say your name. Anna Main. Oh, yeah. My name is Anna Main. <laughs> At Berkeley great. High School. Uh, yeah. yeah I'm at Berkeley High. Um, we're in the shelter in place situation right now, which is fine. Um, so yeah, I have also been trying to check in with students. We, they canceled school in Berkeley, um, on starting on Monday, but the high school canceled, like someone else mentioned this, like at 9 PM Thursday, um, the week last week. So Friday, all the high school teachers went in and it was just kind of a mess uh, because we had no direction or agenda really. We can't give uh, graded assignments. So that kind of makes the whole academic piece really, really tricky and pretty much non-existent. So we're just trying to reach our students, like everyone has been saying, who are who we're most concerned about um, accessing like food <laughs> and stuff. Right. Um, the district or this the high school is giving out Chromebooks. They passed out Chromebooks today, which I thought was cool. Um, How did they do that? Like on the street corner? Or? <laughs> basically, that's what it sounded like. They gave the kids a survey last week, like a technology survey, to kind of preemptively get a, I think, a temperature check on who was going to need devices. And I think they're prioritizing the kids on free and reduced lunch. And then today they had like a two-hour window where they could go pick them up 
Um, so I haven't heard how it went. <laughs> so totally don't know if this helps, but Anna was able to get your four other colleagues, three other colleagues, yeah, and teach three. the same students that you do in the same department. Mm -hmm. And we just jumped on a quick Zoom like this, and they're all on Mount Comet and all on Youth Voices. Mm -hmm. Unclear whether or not, you know, how or when you you guys will be able to use that. But um, but I'm happy to help make that happen. And yeah, that was so, awesome. That everyone so, was very frustrated because we'd been sent to school without really having any kind of plan, and it was very frustrating. And so it was really helpful to at least do something productive, like set up these accounts. And I think it just made us, it made my colleagues feel a lot better. And I know um, those of us who teach more advanced students uh, are going to try Zoom and checking in with our students uh, tomorrow and Friday. So then what we might try, I think it's easier to explain like the purpose of both of those spaces and, you know, face to face, well, as face to face as we can be right now. Yeah. So, that's cool. the plan. That was really helpful. So I'm okay ending there. <laughs> and the, 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 the there that I want to kind of end on is sort of like, let's keep sharing what we're doing. Chris, thank you. I mean, I, I wasn't being critical at all about your calmness. It's just that you're suffering through an earthquake and this, and it's like, and then he's just like, so far. Anyway. <laughs> well, we're the I did adults. not know we had an earthquake. That's crazy. What? I didn't even know there was an earthquake there. Wow. Yeah, it shook things pretty good. You said we're the adults? Is that what I said, We're the adults, yeah. It's like the okay. kids can panic, but like if the adults start losing their minds, it's, it's not good. Right. Yet, I also do want to say your sharing what you're doing is is really, really, really helpful. So let's keep doing that. I think that's really all we can do. Um, and, and the other piece is, I mean, I don't know how districts are going to stop us, right? <laughs> but there is a lot of power in the youth helping each other. There's a lot of power in teachers helping teachers. So, you know, that districts want to shut that down is upsetting to me, but still. Um, I, you know, but let's keep, let's keep, let's keep sharing. Mm -hmm. And, um, thank you all for doing this tonight. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. Thank Take you so care. much. Thanks guys. Thanks everybody.